Harvard shook. That is the topic of today's video. My name is Craig Meister. I'm a college admissions coach. You can learn more about me and how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process on my website, which is collegemeister.com. And if you're interested in learning about whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America, visit areyouontracktogetin.com. Again, that's areyouontracktogetin.com, at which you will complete a free three-minute assessment. Your results will be emailed to you right away, and they will help you clarify whether or not you are or your student is on track for selective college admission in the United States of America. I did a video last year on a Harvard supplement to the Common App, and specifically the five supplemental essay prompts where students in last admission cycle could respond in up to 200 words for the five supplemental essay prompts on Harvard Supplement to the Common App. Well, this year, it's a new year, a new cycle, and Harvard doesn't want to read as many of your words, which is funny because you would think, you know, Harvard would be like hard to get into, and it is statistically, of course, hard to get into Harvard. But you would think like Harvard, you know, they're going to want a lot of writing because it's like la creme de la creme. They really want to challenge you and all. But actually what we're seeing is Harvard Supplement is getting easier now than harder. That's interesting, right? So this year, every one of the five supplemental essay prompts on Harvard Supplement to the Common App have a word count limit of only 150 words. Last year, it was 200 words. So that's a big difference. That is a big, big difference. Basically, they're going to be doing 75% of the reading this year in the admissions office than they were last year when you could write up to 200 words. This year, you could only work basically in your full supplement, write up to 750 words in these five supplemental prompts. Uh, but on top of that, there's actually really funny language that's also included before the prompts are even unfurled that says as follows, the following required five short answer questions invite you to reflect on and share how your life experiences and academic and extracurricular activities shaped you, how you will engage with others at Harvard, and your aspirations for the future. Each question can be answered in about 100 words. So what Harvard is saying there is actually, guess what? No pressure. This is a safe space for you. If you can't even hit 150 words, about 100 words is fine. And so if everyone did that, and actually everyone wrote just 100 words in response to these five questions, that would be half the reading that admissions officers at, at Harvard completed last year for this year. But, you know, basically it would be half as much because last year you could write up to 200 words. And this year they're basically saying, basically saying oh, you know, do about 100 words. No problem. So what that's basically implicitly telling some students is those students, again, who cannot write or think clearly, don't worry, as long as you're applying from the right state or from the right income level or the right demographic, don't stress yourself out. Don't worry about it, man. Don't worry. Or I can't say man. Don't worry about it, person. It's, it's okay. It's all right. Uh, but for the normal, <laughs> but for the normal applicant, I would recommend you use all 150 words for each of these five responses that Harvard is giving you on the Common App, even though they're they're basically telegraphing the kids who can't think or write clearly, don't worry, we're not judging writing hard anymore. It's 2024, no one knows how to write or think anymore, and you can still get into Harvard. Now, I will say, let's talk about the actual prompts. Uh, the prompts themselves are four out of five of them are the same as last year. The first one, Harvard has long recognized the importance of enrolling a diverse student body. How will the life experiences that shape who you are today enable you to contribute to Harvard? Same exact question that existed number one last year. The third one is also the same. Briefly describe any of your extracurricular activities, employment experience, travel, or family responsibilities that have shaped who you are. Uh, interesting, you know, it's funny that travel or family responsibilities are back to back. Of course, you think of travel, like some Harvard applicants, they've traveled to, you know, Milan one weekend, they're in the south of France the next weekend, you know, they're on a safari the next weekend. Uh, so that, that that's sort of the uh, top 1% of the top 1% who gets into Harvard. 
probably, again, not because they're great writers, but because they're in the top 1% of the top 1%. But then there's also, right after that, family responsibility. So that's, you know, another increasing percentage of Harvard students, the students who basically can't even do extracurricular activities outside the home because they're taking care of their five younger siblings or their sick grandparent who just was able to flee the homeland and now is living with them in a house in uh, Michigan or whatever, but whatever the case may be. Uh, it's a, a very diverse group of individuals at uh, Harvard that ultimately matriculate. Of course, when I say diverse, I mean extreme group of individuals. Very big extremes exist on Harvard's campus. Not much in the mushy middle. Uh, the next prompt is also the same, number four as last year. How do you hope to use your Harvard education in the future? Again, that was repeated from last year. Also, the last one, number five, top three things your roommate might like to know about you. Uh, again, all of these are repeats from last year. And so watch my video from last year, which is linked below this video, in order to get the straight dope on those. I don't know why they ask the one about the top three, number five. That should be number three. You know, I'm sort of a perfectionist in that way. But in any case, the new question for this year is um, as follows. Uh, briefly describe and well, so I'm sorry, this is the one that was cut. Let me make this very clear. This is the one that was cut. It's no longer in existence. Uh, briefly describe an intellectual experience that was most important that was important to you. This one has been retired after a year. <laughs> that was not a long career for that prompt. Uh, and it has been replaced by this prompt. Describe a time when you strongly disagreed with someone about an idea or issue. How did you communicate or engage with this person? What did you learn from the experience? Now, this question is actually similar to a question you're going to see in a number of different supplements this cycle that have been making the rounds over recent years. And it's more timely than ever after Harvard has seen student protests and occupation over the last year. They want to get a sense for how disagreeable you really are. It's one thing to disagree, but it's another thing to disagree disagreeably. And Harvard is trying to screen for that with this new prompt. They got rid of the intellectual prompt because, let's face it, no one's intellectual anymore going to Harvard. Most of the students going to Harvard are doing it for very self-centered reasons and, uh, you know, the brass tacks of the value added and networking and status, et cetera. They, you know, maybe a 5%, 10% are interested in intellectual ideas going to Harvard. So that, that question has been retired. The uh, rest are, again, really focused on the superficial and... Harvard, though, is also interested to make sure you're not going to, like, burn down a building while you're on campus just because you don't agree with the majority or minority opinion uh, of the person next to you or the president at any given time at Harvard, whoever that may be. So here is the deal with this response. Try to come across as being civil and open-minded, even if you're not. And, of course, most Harvard applicants are probably not civil and open-minded. That's just who is attracted to Harvard these days. But what I will say is that if you are civil and open-minded, make sure you emphasize that here. If you are not, this would be a time to maybe uh, hold your fire and try to pretend that you are civil and open-minded with others who disagree with you and try to pick on an actual time in which specifically you can prove that you are willing and able to engage and, and maintain a relationship with someone uh, who is very much on a different side of, of an issue than you are. And you also want to hopefully have an authentic reflection at the end. Again, you only have 150 words because Harvard can't stress you out too much because they want to be able to accept students of all different true academic and critical thinking levels. So you only have 150 words. It would be lovely if you had 500 words because that would really allow you to flesh out the whole experience. But again, that would be far too much to ask these days at Harvard. So what I would say is you want to make sure to still build out at least 50 words where you're able to show how you changed, how you're better even as a result of engaging with that person of a different perspective or philosophy on some issue, all right? So how I would structure it as a very miniature essay, a one-sentence intro with a thesis, a couple to four-sentence uh, body supporting, proving the thesis, and then a one to two-sentence conclusion max. You don't have that many words where you reflect on what you learned, how you've trained, changed, how you've grown into that much more of an impressive version of yourself than you were before. Uh, so please stop, take that one seriously. Yes, you only have 150 words, but this is your opportunity to show that you're 
going to be a civil citizen of Harvard and not a violent revolutionary, uh, which Harvard is trying to get away from. Even though they'll want revolutionary ideas on campus, they don't necessarily want those revolutionary ideas to come out in revolutionary format over the four years you're there. You may be saying, Craig, why so few words? You know, one argument that Harvard may make is that it was just too much reading last year, too much reading, and they want to lighten the load on their admissions officers who are reading the application files. So they they cut it by 25%, could be their argument. But I don't buy that. They'll do a lot of reading in order to get the class they want if it requires it. I, I think there's another excuse here. I'll get to that in a minute. The other option would be that because of AI, because of admissions consultants, because of ghostwriters, because of just all the liars who are applying to Harvard, they don't want to actually uh, read longer essays because the thinking goes that the longer the essay, the more likely that OpenAI wrote it for you because you know, most schools don't teach writing anymore. So the the thought process at Harvard goes that since you know no one can write, uh, if they get too good of an essay, it's probably written by an adult and or written by uh, ChatGPT or something, some sort of AI uh, program. So why even go through the motions, right? Let's just cut right to the quick and have them answer shorter questions. That might be a little bit of it, um, but I don't even think that's the real reason it's happening. Uh, some kids still can write, most can't. Uh, and um, there are some still honest, uh, still uh, some honest uh, applicants to Harvard. And then finally, the real reason I think they're cutting down the word count is actually because what just makes the most sense, which is the fewer the words that students have to share, the easier it is for Harvard admissions officers to make subjective opinions. When I say opinions, I mean admissions decisions. Because the longer the writing, the more obvious it would become that Harvard is accepting students who lack strong communication or critical thinking skills. And uh, individuals who fail at that are easier able to cobble together 150 words than 200. Uh, and so they, Harvard wants the freedom to accept who they want to accept based off of what they want to accept students on. And they don't want a, a sort of a paper trail to show that they have different standards for different types of applicants. We know this legally because Harvard lost the affirmative action case. So as much as Harvard can do to sort of tamp down any proof that they are accepting students based off of different standards, they want to do that because Harvard ultimately just wants to accept who they want to accept and they're going to get to do it whatever way they want to do it. So if it means cutting out all writing eventually, that's what they'll do. But for now, they're down to from 200 words last year to maybe even half of that this year for some students who only hit around 100, but uh, definitely no more than 150 words for the maximum number of words you can write in any uh, response to these five required questions on the Harvard supplement. Now, the reason I say Harvard shook at the top of this video is because something has gone awry in the admissions office at Harvard. Uh, after the affirmative action ruling, all of the Ivies redesigned their supplements and their supplemental essay prompts. Harvard was not an exception. They, they had five 200-word essays last year on the Common App, as I've explained. But something about this cycle has clearly shook Harvard because they would not have changed uh, their supplement again at all if they could have avoided doing so. So what I think has happened is that they did not get the numbers that they wanted demographically in their class of 2028. And or they did, but they didn't feel that they did so in a way that was kosher. Let's put it that way. And so one or the other happened and they needed to protect themselves moving forward. And that is why uh, they've made this adjustment to basically cutting the total number of words students can share from 1,000 one year to 750 the next because they're covering for something. Uh, otherwise, they would not have changed their supplement in any way, shape or form. So again, I think that Harvard is shook. I... Uh, this is just a scent that I'm picking up on. I, I have no inside information, but it, it's logically something that makes a lot of sense. So I did want to share that uh, as sort of a bookend to what I said in the beginning, which is Harvard is shook. Now, if you want to get into Harvard, it's very important that you listen up and listen up very well at this point because I'm offering a new product. It's called my pre-read. 
And it's for you if you want to get in to any selective institution, but you've gotten this far in the video, so you're probably very interested in Harvard. When you finished your Common App and you want to know if it's as strong as possible and whether or not in its current condition your chances of admission are impressive, inconclusive, or inadequate to Harvard, you want my pre-read. Getting my pre-read now means having me review your entire application to Harvard, just like an admissions officer or an admissions committee will review it later, and receiving by email no later than the time you reserve on my website, which is mypreread.com for this product, a comprehensive report highlighting what is working and what is not on your full Common App and your Harvard Common App Supplement. If you've yet to submit your Common App to Harvard, my pre-read may motivate you to make adjustments to it before your deadline. If you've already submitted your Common App to Harvard, my pre-read will prepare you for what I deem to be your likely admissions outcome at Harvard up in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Now, I will say, this is infotainment. That means it's informational and it's going to be entertaining for you either right before you submit your app or in the weeks as you wait for your decision after you've submitted your app. So treat it as such. This is a product that is infotainment, informational and entertaining. It could help you a great deal, though. So keep that in mind. If you want to learn more, go to mypreread.com. Again, that's mypreread.com. If you enjoyed today's video, go to my website, which is collegemeister.com in order to learn more about how you can work with me one-on-one -on -one throughout the entire college admissions process. Otherwise, please be a friend and consider giving my video a thumbs up and also subscribing to my channel. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and most importantly, stay stress-free throughout the entire college admissions process.